Welcome back to the Battle of Perryville here. We are at Springfield Pike, and of course we're trying to hold it to the very end. The bitter end. Now, a few people have mentioned um, the, the different ways you can play this game. We are aware, of course, of the fact that we can take individual generals and attack with them. That's what we're doing over here with um, Braxton, excuse me, not Braxton Bragg, with Polk, uh, Major General Leonidas Polk, and we're already starting to set up over here on the northern side of the river. That's really going to be the goal here. I'm going to try to push the Union back. I will do some micromanaging, but we could just go ahead and, of course, select the general and do it that way, so we could actually take Major Simon Bruckner and just go ahead and push forward. So we'll do it that way, uh, the more appropriate way anyway. And one interesting thing about this game is you can actually put in historical focus so that the general will act like the actual general. Uh, for instance, Braxton Bragg, according to one of the users on here, was quite defensive, so that's probably what he would do. In this case, though, we are pushing forward with everybody else. Let's go for it, boys. Love that artillery. Now, they still got Doctor's Creek, but we are coming in over here, the northern side of Doctor's Creek. This is, of course, the flank attack that we were talking about. Um, and hopefully it works out well. So I'm immediately going to start sending some folks over there. Start sending some infantry. I am micromanaging a bit. But we can just grab Polk and, of course, order them all here. Let's do that. Major General Leonidas Polk. They'll all move forward. They'll all attack the enemy. And it looks like these guys are about to do that right now. Look at that. The army is moving forward. Let's hope that they can take it to a total victory. I certainly hope so. You can see a bunch of men moving forward here, too. It's still a lot of Yankees up on the hill. So we want to try to knock down that, those cannons quickly. I am really loving this game. Of course, there's a lot to be improved. Um, but in general, this is just such a fun, fun game. And there's, it's amazing, you know, it's in such early access, but there's already so much to do here. So much content. Let's go, boys. Let's take that Doctor's Creek. So far, I believe we have the rest of the battlefield, if I'm not mistaken here. Just make sure. Perry, Perryville is entirely ours. Now, we're still engaging this unit. I don't know if you guys remember this. Those, that have, those of you that have seen part one will remember this. We're still engaging them. I'm not going to stop. We might as well keep it up, but even better would be to take our infantry and move them over here. So that's actually what I'm going to do. Uh, let those guys go ahead and figure we'll figure out whatever they're trying to figure out. And we'll see if the flank attack is going well. Now this attack is going okay, just the frontal assault here is going very, very well. But we can see that, look at that, the Union are getting their reinforcements. I told you guys they would eventually outnumber us, and this could be where that occurs. So I do want to try to get to the Doctor's Creek soon. Um, easier said than done, though, for sure. Come on, boys. Everybody in Doctor's Creek? Let's stop them. At this point, I'm even tempted to charge with some of these units, which we certainly could do here. Let's go for it. Going for the charge with Woods Brigade. I'm also going to go uh, for the charge with Bushrod Johnson's Brigade. These guys, of course, would be almost Yankee uniforms. Let's go for it. Here we go, charge. Huzzah! Let them have it, boys. They just kind of decided to charge into oblivion. There we go. That's more like it. And there we go, guys. Took out the artillery, most of the artillery anyway. We might even be engaging their infantry here. They are actually in a flanked position. So we could actually push up on them and engage even more, do some more damage. To push forward with this infantry unit. Again, I don't mind micromanaging now and then in this game. I think that's okay. Come on, come on, boys. They've lost 265 men here in Liddell's Brigade, but he's been here since the very beginning of the fighting. I really wanted to contribute here. Without getting any friendly fire, that's going to be tougher to do. Fire! Ah. The same with the artillery here. We're just going to maximize firepower on that location. Look at that. We are arriving at the Doctor's Creek area with Wharton's Brigade. 
Uh, this is just standard cavalry, pretty much. But what is pretty frightening is suddenly we're noticing that the Union is over here with cavalry. So they've either deduced that we're already going to cut through here. They probably, they probably did that. Or they're simply moving into position at the right time, at the right place. So we need to be prepared here. Come on, boys. Get that artillery up on the hill, damn it. We have him. I think we've got him. Still a hell of a fight going on here. We could send in another unit and start uh, doing another charge, but I'm not even sure. A lot of Union still falling there. We are continuing the fight, but I don't want to send in any more men. I think that's going to be quite enough. And here we go. We are finally engaging the enemy at Doctor's Creek. Our cavalry have gotten, are actually firing from their horses. We could send in the cavalry for a charge. I'm just not sure that's a good idea. Let's send in the infantry. Come on now, come on. Doctor's Creek is officially under our control. That should be helpful. For the south, boys. For the south. We are currently winning the fight, but that doesn't mean much. It's still very early on in the fighting itself. Look at that devastating, devastating volley from Wharton. I've got to give it to him. I might even want to bring up uh, Donaldson's brigade and also do some damage here. But it looks like they are actually leaving the area. They're falling back a bit. Could be trying to lure us into a trap fire. Yeah. Good shooting, boys. We don't want them to make it to the tree line, but they've got a bunch of cavalry there, which could prove useful. getting up this hill and this wooded area with the artillery is taking these guys a long time and that close combat fight continues it looks like it's never going to end let's grab our colonel samuel powell's infantry and just get over here all right so i think we're definitely forcing the union back look at that <laughs> we actually force First Brigade, that's First Brigade right there, to fall back with quite a few losses, I would, I would presume. We'll try to get numbers here, but that's what I want to keep on doing. So I'm going to order this guy back. He's got some great shots, but let's push him back to his original position. Let the Union sort of fall back to that location. And at 11.28, we could keep fighting the whole day. You know, the battle only ends here when the day ends. That's pretty much how, this, how Civil War era battles work. Uh, and that's, that's the situation going on right now. Sterling very tired. They're still fighting here. We're still looking at losses on both sides, but the enemy will not surrender. All right, there we go. We do have um, some, some faltering here. I'm going to charge, but unfortunately the faltering is on our side as well. So I am going to charge there with that unit just overwhelm them with, with numbers pretty much that's that's my goal here and that union will not surrender come on now fire these are of course our unit johnson's brigade which actually looks like a unit um that is a union one but it's, it's simply not it just has interesting coloration there fire I'm okay with just a volley. We gotta make something happen here. There we go. I see one of the Union Brigades retreating. Finally, after a volley, we got the second one to retreat as well. We gotta push this attack. We gotta meet the enemy at Doctor's Creek. That's for sure gonna be the case. So I'm gonna take Hardy's um, command, and I'm just gonna order the boys to move forward. In fact, I wanna change that a little bit. I wanna really just have them actually right there on the bridge, pretty much. Okay, and let's charge. We are going at full speed to that location. 
I think that's going to be very important here for a victory. Of course, to get that order out, it's going to take a while. We're going to have to send a bunch of couriers. But we'll get that order out. Get on that hill, boys. Come on. Come on now. We've got Yankees approaching here. We have killed so many, though. And apparently, according to the dev, this just got fixed today. We won't see any more wounding, flailing soldiers. I mean, of course, a few of them will still be flailing, but most of them will just be still and uh, dead. Let's be honest. But here we go. We're leaving it up to Hardy to command his forces, get them into position, and hopefully take over Doctor's Creek here. Um, the only place I'm still micromanaging is over here with Polk's Brigade, I believe. Let's see if it is under command of Polk. I believe it is. <clears throat> yeah. So that's going to be Polk's Brigade, and again, I will have them set up as well. But we're going to have a bit of a different setup for these guys. We're still going to just advance normally. And look at that. So cool. So I just noticed that. The map actually shows shattered units here. It actually appears as a shattered unit. That is just so cool. Um, I can barely express it. That, that's really, really interesting. So we are going to be advancing with all of these guys. But as you know, to move an entire army group like this... Uh, it's going to take a while. We're going to have to get all of those couriers out. They're going to have to move essentially at once and overwhelm the Doctor's Creek area. Now you can see that the battle is falling in our favor ever so slightly, but this is by no means a victory yet. Not even, not even close actually. Fire! <clears throat> Don't let those Yankees run. Get them. Actually, I do want to let them run. Just stay there, one. Just stay there now. You know what? If we wanted to, we could also engage the cavalry over here. Um, might not be a bad idea to send some of our infantry through. So we'll send Colonel Preston Smith here. Just have him engage that cav. Keep the cav focused on the infantry and not focused on the rest of our army moving into position, at least. Let's see. We've got everything under our control. Everything. Lebanon's left the fight. We've got to get him back. And I'm going to send him right there. Just right to the front line. I think it's going to take him quite a while to get there. Looks like our cavalry's taking it upon themselves to attack. I did not ask our cavalry to attack, but Colonel John A. Wharton's going to do his thing, and I think he managed to just massacre just about every single one of the enemy units. So let's get up here with him. Just keep an eye on the road to Doctor's Creek. He can call out any um, arriving enemy soldiers, and I'm almost certain that the Yankees are going to have a lot of support to try and take this location. I'm, I'm almost 100% certain on that, in fact. Come on, boys. Let's get the move on now. There we go. We've got movement. It's not easy to get through these woods with all of that artillery. Once the artillery gets out here, I kind of want to set it up just on this side of the creek. Um... We should be able to spot any incoming units. And look at that. Their artillery, they've gotten off their horses. We've got our infantry here. We are going to engage. Again, to try and... <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> to try and lower the amount of um, men they've got in that unit there. So we're just going to try to knock down their numbers a bit. And again, keep the focus off the rest of our army. But it looks like they've got more uh, cavalry sort of picking up the pace behind them. Actually, that's a commander unit. Give them hell, boys. Colonel Preston Smith. Good shooting. Right away we begin, and we are firing from the woods, so we've got that advantage. We don't have to worry about uh, cover, really. Our cover's pretty decent. Doesn't look like we knocked down anybody. That was that was a pretty awful show uh, by our men. We still continue to hold the creek area here. And the question is, are the Yankees going to push? Or are they going to try to retake it? I think they have to. They're almost certainly going to try. Well, the battle is shaping up quite nice, I must say. Pretty sure we won sort of the first the first part of the fight, um, but there's still quite a lot of fighting to be done here. 
Try to get, of course, those men over there as quickly as possible, but they are moving as quickly as they can and will return when the fighting gets rough again. Otherwise, we're just going to be looking here at uh, these guys sort of just pretty much uh, <laughs> paying, paying lip service to one another for quite a while when we should be fighting. So we'll return, guys, when we get into some meaningful combat. So far, the battle looks great. The decision at Perryville is upon us. And it looks like the Yankees are actually immediately attacking here from the north. We've got our guys in position, guys. Look at that. We're slowly getting into position, I should say. The reason I returned is because I'm seeing quite a few Yankee brigades north of us from Wilson's Creek, probably trying to come and provide some reinforce reinforcements uh, to the infantry currently here. But we're just going to try to knock down any and all cavalry brigades in the area. They are harassing us. However, I think we're going to have to order Braxton Bragg um, to go ahead and move across, period. Just move across the river completely because they are not challenging us over here um, at all. Uh, sorry, not Braxton Bragg. Hardy. So let's make sure that Hardy is just set up over here. Um, I'll, I'll make that look a little bit better. Hold on. But I want to make sure that he pretty much um, has a position across the creek here so that we can engage the enemy at will. Let's go for it. And again, we are going to make it a charge, so we're just going to move into that position very, very quickly. Uh, because as long as we can hold it here, and as long as the enemy doesn't take any routes to the north, which they might, they very well might, then we should be pretty safe. Um, we we'll just have to wait and see. In fact, I am going to leave one of our artillery pieces. We already have one here, but I'm going to actually leave two just to watch for the enemy. In case they start coming into range, we can start firing at them pretty heavily. Uh, but nonetheless, we mo will move the rest of the force forward. Keep it up, boys. Keep it up. Come on, Colonel. Get up there. Get the Colonel off his horse so he can actually fire. A hundred and eighty-four losses here for Donaldson's brigade. So it's it's not an easy fight for him. It certainly is a challenge. But he must keep it up, and again, forcing one of these uh, cavalry units to fall back is going to help us dramatically. Now look at that, see what I'm talking about. We've got Union forces approaching on the road. We're going to have to go out and meet them for sure, but it looks like they're going to try to cut across this way. The coward's way. And actually try and get us from behind. So we are going to send these guys back uh, to face this Union uh, invader. Let's go for it. Might have to actually redraw Leonidas Polk's lines. I don't think he'll mind. I think his men were kind of set up to do that anyway. Um, so let's grab Polk here. Oh, sorry, that's not Polk. Shame on me. Where is Polk? There he is. No. Hey, y'all. Okay, so we're going to put Polk this way, because we know the enemy is going to try to cross here. So I'm just going to set him up looking north. I do have to unfortunately order him to fall back. It is a fallback order because, well, we're falling back, but we're actually kind of advancing. So a bit tricky. A bit tricky. Now you are going to have to stay here, Donaldson. I should have made that clear. The rest of Polk's men are leaving the area to, of course, face the rest of the Union Army, and I'm sure they've got a lot more they're going to send at us here. So far, everything is ours, except for Perryville herself. Come on now. Get you... Just stay there. <clears throat> I guess the unit we uh, we had at Perryville here, uh, Johnson's Brigade, has not, has not stayed in the location. I kind of wanted him to stay there, but since he's part of uh, Hardy's command, he returned. So I'm going to go ahead and immediately send him back, just to make sure we have complete control over that region. There we go. Looks like the rest of our army is arriving. The rest of Braxton Bragg's entire army is arriving here. That's what we're going to need to take on the enemy. I think for sure it's the only way we can actually beat the Union is to get the force right here. Otherwise, they could simply break through the back of our lines over here, take all of these positions without even so much as a fight. So we've got to get some infantry there and quickly. Oh, Bonnie Blue Flag. That's a great zone actually playing the Bonnie Blue Flag during the fight. It's pretty amazing. That's right. Donaldson is continuing the fight. I'm actually ordering him to just look back and continue firing. But we've got the rest of these guys prepared to move at post haste to that location right there. I think
think actually Polk's men are already doing that. Let me just make sure that uh, they're going quickly. So I'm going to actually order a charge um, into that location. But pretty much in this case, charge simply means, means move very, very quickly. Uh, we'll have to get those couriers out. I think we're holding the Doctor's Creek area just fine. And as long as we can hold the rest of this area, guys, we are going to be getting a victory at Perryville for sure. And hopefully fairly soon. This battle can only last so long. It is 108 p.m., so I guess we could fight probably seven, eight, maybe even nine more hours. I'm not sure when the sun's going to go down uh, during this actual fight. In any case, guys, thank you so much for watching. And of course, if you want to see part three of this battle, you know what to do. Hit that like button, drop a comment down below, subscribe if you haven't already. All of these things really do help. And of course, when it comes to battles like this, uh, this is a longer process. It's not an immediate result. Uh, these battles take quite a long time, and I'm pretty sure that Perryville is only going to be a day extra, pretty much. Um, or, if that, it's probably going to end on on this day. So, thinking that we're going to be fighting a little bit longer, but pretty soon this battle is going to end completely. And what we have to focus on now are those arriving Union soldiers from the north. All of those Union reinforcements, approximately thirty to 40,000 of them. So, that's going to be a hell of a fight. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll be back soon. Glory to the Confederacy.